It is the 88th day into the doctor's strike and still no deal in sight between them and the government. But the court has given them two more days to continue with negotiations that will be spearheaded by the clergy. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us here on a KTN News Desk. We have a lot lander for you, but first, let's take a look at the highlights. Somber mood as the late Nyeri governor Naritu Gashagwa's body arrives from London. Religious leaders take the driver's seat in a long journey to end a doctor's strike. And the Cohesion Commission raises the alarm over the zoning of the country into political strongholds. Good afternoon, our sign language interpreter is Meresha Owiti and I am Akisa Wandera. The body of the late Nyeri County Governor Nderitu Gashagwa will be preserved at the Leaf Funeral Home pending his burial next Monday. Gashagwa's body arrived early this morning at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport where it was received by his family and key leaders from the county of Nyeri. Colleagues and friends described Gashagwa as an astute leader whose leadership skills should be emulated by all those seeking political positions in the coming election. That's what uh, happened earlier on in the day, very early in the morning at about 6 a.m. And in Nyeri County, our reporter Carol Nderi spoke to some residents who expressed their feelings about the departure of their governor, Nderi to Gashagwa. Let's now link up with our reporter Carol Nderi for more on that. Sakuna utawala mpia hapa Nyeri. Nyeri na governor mpia. Ni mambo gani au matarajio gani ukoneo kwa utawala mpia wa Nyeri? kwanza vile ningetaka kumwambia mwenye ameingia juzi alifuatilia ile mambo ilikuwa kama kuna ile project kama hizi sasa kuna soko hapa iko hapa chini na bado kuna ile miradi mdogo mdogo ilikuwa imeanza na yule gachagua dura mayo sasa ni maiti kwa hivyo naye kama anataka ku win the, the voters kwa sababu bado tuna approach the the, the August the, that is the election akifuatilia hiyo mambo anaweza kuwa na amewin kwa watu wengi na watakuwa na confidence na yeye kwa hivyo naye nitamuzii kwanza afuatilie hiyo jia kwanza ilikuwa ipotea ama kama kuna ile watu walikuwa wakifanya watu na gachagua naye anaweza bado kuanza kuwa kwao na anaweza kuina hata hawa watu wenye na wako na kudesa tamkumbuka marehemu gachagua kwa mambo gani haswa eh sana sana ni maendeleo ile ameleta kaunti ya Nyeri sana sana upande wa kilimo upande wa kahawa alikuwa ametengeneza soko za kahawa ikawa mzuri barabara ametengeneza sa lulo kila mahali town iko sawa soko iko sawa kila mahali amefanya kazi utamkumbuka marehemu gachagua kwa mambo gani ukiwa mkazi wa Nyeri Uh, kama mkaji wa Nyeri jambo la kwanza ambao ningeraka kusema kwamba ni yeye ambao amewahi kuwa sasa ndiye governor wa kwanza katika mji wetu kwa hivyo hiyo ni history wakati ambao tumekuwa na devolution ni yeye ambao amekuwa ni governor wa kwanza katika nchi yetu na hiyo itakuwa inakubukwa na hata watoto wetu jambo lile lingine ambao ningeraka kusema kwamba tunaona kuna kazi ambao wamefanya kuna maendeleo ambao wamekuwa unapoingia huku katika vijijini ameweza kujaribu na kuhakikisha kwamba kumemagwa mana na kwa hivyo barabara zimekuwa ni jema. Mwisho tamkumbuka kwa maneno gani hasa? Mambo gani yale alifanya zaidi? Kama ni barabara ametujegea, kuna mali ameweka stima kama dhoguma, na mali ingine kama soko ametutengenezea. Sasa hivi kuna mali soko inaendelea. Jambo jamalisa lakini bado inaendelea. Kaunti ya Nyeri ni safi. Nairobi ndio Nairobi iko na takataka lakini Nyeri iko chiwa na mahokas governor alikuwa na show wa uze wakiwa na imani 
As we've just been talking to some of the residents of Nyeri County, and uh, there in mourning, they've offered their messages of condolences to the family of the late Egasha. We're remembering him as an astute politician, one who did not shy away from any political battles uh, during the impeachment debacle. He really fought some of the residents of Nyeri have remembered the altercations that were there between him and the county assembly, and uh, he fought his way through Senate. Of course, they remember the developmental projects that he initiated. Sakuna. Well, Karen Derry, thank you very much for that report. And at the Lee Funeral Home, Nyeri political leaders led by Gashagwa's successor, Governor Samuel Wamadhai, were in hand to receive the body. Gashagwa's family expressed appreciation of the support coming from beyond Nyeri County. Take a look. The people of Nyeri who left at midnight to be here to welcome Governor Gashagwa home. We want to thank the political leadership led by Senator Kagwa and members of parliament. I want to take this opportunity on behalf of the family to give a big thank you to His Excellency the President and his government for the support extended to the family. We note with a lot of appreciation that the President designated the High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to escort Gachagua home, and that is a very great honor uh, to the departed uh, men and the family. Uh, all arrangements are in place, and we are getting a lot of support from the national government, from the county government. So we are asking all the people of Nyeri and Kenyans who wish to come, that they are welcome to our home on Monday the 6th at 11 a.m. Just to re-emphasize what um, uh, Bonaregadi has said, that um, we as Nyeri County, the political class, as well as uh, everybody else, we all want to work together uh, to give our departed governor a really decent send-off. All right, let's now move on to another big story of the day. Religious leaders have now taken over the role of chief mediator in negotiations to resolve the doctor's pay dispute. The leaders under the Inter-Religious Council of Kenya, who appeared in court during the mention of the doctor's strike case, are optimistic that a deal will be reached in the next few days. The Court of Appeal gave the mediators five days to conclude the talks. This matter was recent for further mention today to record a consent on the mediation process between uh, the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Pharmacists and Dentists Union, uh, the Ministry of Health and the Council of Governors. Uh, that was undertaken following a consent order that was filed in this court on 15th February 2017. Council for all the parties agree the mediators a uh, filed an interim report. However, no agreement has been reached yet because there are certain issues that have not been sorted out. But everybody is hopeful that with the support of the faith-based organizations that are in court today under the auspices of the Interreligious Council of Kenya, the remaining issues that have not been resolved are likely to be sorted out if given more time. Accordingly, bearing in mind the delicate nature of this uh, public and the public interest involved in this matter, we give the following directions. One, the interim report filed by the mediators on 2nd March 2017 be treated as an interim report. The Interreligious Council of Kenya who are represented in court today by high-ranking religious leaders are allowed to participate in further negotiations on the remaining issues and to record a consent of the way forward on 7th March 2017. The matter will therefore be mentioned on 7th March 2017 and we are hopeful that it will be resolved and doctors will be back to work and the suffering to the public will come to an end. Have a good day. Doctors Union officials have expressed frustrations at what they term as a government de deliberate attempt to, to scuttle the negotiation process through its bloggers. The officials say the government has been peddling false information over the talks. They, however, say they are committed to the negotiations, which resume this afternoon. You have been informed and you are aware 
can be just made and presented several options on how we can solve this crisis. We have been part of the solution, but the government seems to be running away from their responsibility of being part of the solution. We remain committed to the talks which have been again uh, uh, ordered by the courts through the church leaders, and we will continue be, to be part of the solution. But I want to tell Kenyans to re-examine the form of propaganda they listen to from the government. For God's sake, doctors cannot lie. Doctors are saying the truth, and the government is helping to using bloggers to give propaganda to the public, and nothing can be further from the truth. So as can be due, we remain committed, and we continue engaging, and with the hope that the government will engage with good faith and avoid any form of propaganda can, that can jeopardize the talks. But we thank you from here. We'll be convening again in the afternoon under uh, the leadership of the church leaders and again the mediators to try and find a solution which is amicable to all Kenyans and for the best interest of this country. All right, and uh, those are some of the things that happened. Uh, those uh, doctors' union officials were speaking immediately after that ruling was made outside the court, and there they say the government is really frustrating them um, using its bloggers to give out uh, fake information. And uh, Rita Tinina, our senior reporter, uh, attended that particular court session and is now joining us live from our city centre studios with more details about what was said in court and some of the things we expect in the next two days, given that religious leaders have now taken up uh, the role of chief mediator in this negotiations. Very good afternoon to you, Rita. Um, kindly just take us through the court process today and uh, what we expect to see after two days. Are they likely to, uh, to reach a deal? Rita, Rita, uh, can you hear me? Well, Akisa, Rita? I could not uh, quite get you there, right. but some divine intervention earlier on this morning with the entry of religious leaders into this uh, pay dispute. The Interreligious Council of Kenya, which is, brings together all religious faiths from the Catholic, Anglican, Hindu, Muslim, now taking over this mediation process. Before court, they were represented uh, there by high-ranking officials of those religious uh, uh, faiths. And Adan Wachu, the chair of SUPKEM, who's also a member of the Interreligious Council of Kenya, saying that they needed two more days to be able uh, to reach a consensus over this dispute. He told the court that they have been meeting separately with the union officials uh, as well as the government side, the Council of Governors, and there was progress and there was indication that a consensus can be reached in the next few days. And so the court uh, then agreed, told, gave a direction that the parties should come back uh, on Tuesday and give a report. Senior counsel James Orengo, when the religious leaders asked for two days, uh, said that they needed perhaps another extra two days or so. And so uh, the agreement in court, the directions from the court, is that the parties will come back on Tuesday and give a report. The talks have resumed uh, this afternoon. The religious leaders are meeting with the union officials as well as the Council of Governors and the national government to try and solve uh, the crisis. As of yesterday, uh, there was word that a, an agreement uh, would have been reached, but so far we understand, even before court, lawyers saying that there are three issues that are still outstanding. One of them is salaries and allowances. The other is training and promotions as well as a recognition agreement. On the salaries and allowances, the government saying it has given its best offer and cannot give anything else. That is the 40% pay increase that was offered by the president earlier on in the year. And this 40% uh, gives the lowest paid uh, doctor in job group L 196,000 shillings. And job group M, the highest paid uh, doctor specialist, 520,000 shillings. The government sa says that is its best offer. The union officials, on the other hand, saying the 2013 CBA should be the basis uh, for the negotiations, should be the basis uh, for any offer that the government makes. 
So far, the union says it has come down on its demands. The demands, according to the 2013 CBA, was for a 300% pay increase. The doctors now say they have come down to between 150% to 180%. And so both sides are sticking their ground. The government, on the one hand, saying, have given my best. The union officials, on the other hand, saying, we will not cede any more ground uh, in this pay dispute. The doctors saying that they will not go back to work until their demands are met. So, so far, all the mediation efforts have failed, starting with the court secretary general, Francis Atuoli, who took over the process as a mediator when the court case was before the Employment and Labor Relations Court, and later the Law Society of Kenya and the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, which came in when the case went to the Court of Appeal. All of them have failed. This morning, the lawyers for the parties, the interested parties who are acting as mediators, saying, they have done the best they could to try and, and reach a consensus. And so they were letting the matter now take its full course before the court. And so to many, the entry of the religious leaders, perhaps the only remaining hope uh, to try and get doctors back to work, to try and end the suffering of thousands of Kenyans who are in dire need of uh, medical services. And so by next week, we'll wait to see whether the religious leaders I think they have their own secret weapon with the confidence that they expressed in court today, with the optimism that they expressed in court earlier on this morning. Indications are that they know what they are dealing with, they know how far they will be going in the next few days. And so come Tuesday next week, uh, the parties will be back in court to give uh, their report. Back to you, Akisa. Rita, thank you very much uh, for that report. Our senior reporter, Rita Tinina, there joining us from our city centre studios. And, of course, in the next two days, we will know whether it will be a deal or the strike will continue. But, as Rita says, with the divine intervention or the incoming of the clergy to lead the negotiations, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Let's now get into matters election. A conference has been held since yesterday on election uh, preparedness by the National Council of Churches. They've just given out a statement after uh, the conference was completed. Let's just uh, take a look at what was said in that particular session. There is peaceful coexistence before, during, and after the elections. This is of extreme importance in view of the ethnic identity that political parties in Kenya have assumed which results in support for particular candidates being associated with particular tribes. We will, through these forums, endeavor to promote cross-ethnic cohesion by affirming the democratic rights of all Kenyans and condemning stereotyping of any communities. See, we shall undertake advocacy with political leaders and aspirants. The clergy and elders will reach out to political leaders and aspirants at local and national levels to emphasize to them the imperative of peace and to declare that we will actively expose and point out to Kenyans the aspirants who engage in hate speech and incitement to violence. D, the, to facilitate negotiated democracy. <coughs> the clergy and elders will, wherever possible, facilitate and participate in consultations aimed at negotiating around leadership positions so as to ensure every community within the area is included in decision making. The use of available forums to preach peace and criminalize violence. The clergy and elders will use the forums available to them to preach peace among the community members. Where cases of hate speech and incitement of communities occur, the clergy and elders will report to the police and appeal to the inspector general if action is not taken against the perpetrators. In addition, the clergy and elders will encourage all community members to allow politicians of all parties and persuasions to campaign peacefully and freely in every corner of the country to voters. All right, we take a short commercial break at this point. Don't go too far. We still have a lot lined up for you here on KTN News Desk.